Hello there, and welcome back to the Claire Codes channel. Today, we're going to be talking about creating a side project. And in this case, I'm going to be showing you side projects that I'm working on and how I went about creating it to start off with, the idea behind it, and then how I transformed that into a coding project. So let's start off on this journey. So as you can see, I have Illustrator open from the Adobe suite. I'm a big Illustrator person for sure. So this is the project and I'll show you a little bit around it. Basically, I wanted to create like a notebook, a scrapbook notebook. And I could do this physically, right? But I also don't have all of these magazines and like paper glue sticks at my disposal, but I do have Illustrator <laughs> and the internet. So I figured why not do this digitally as opposed to physically. So as you can see here, um, I have my <laughs> notebook cover, which is kind of cute, and put some stickers on it. I found all these stickers on Pinterest, and you'll see a lot of what I do I find on Pinterest um, for like the background images. I mean, you can scour the internet, Tumblr, I found, there's like We Heart It. There are a bunch of places where you can find like, all of this inspiration and so I've been using that as my collage aspect to this. I want to call it a scrapbook but you know like journal. So here I am looking at Pinterest and first thing I looked up was vintage wallpaper and I found this from like the Sistine Chapel. It looked like it could be a it's aesthetically pleasing but it also could be a great uh, element to this page. So as you can see, I am making a shape or like on top of it, and then I make a clipping mask. And so it just cuts out, kind of like scissors, what I want to use. And then I placed it there. Um, I'm grabbing some text because I want to add maybe a to-do list for the day is what I'm thinking. Um, and first I kind of start by just like going over what happened. I woke up late again and like time to do <laughs> for a to-do list. So I also try to like, you know, have fun with this. And, you know, some of it is real. Some of it is exaggeration in this book so far, but it could be a fun, yeah, who knows what it'll turn into. So that's what I like with my projects is just kind of starting somewhere and you never know what things will, where they'll end up, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, so now I'm kind of moving stuff around, seeing where it looks good, grabbing that text again. And now it's time to grab some more images for sure. Now you can watch me just kind of grab stuff. And I'm gonna continue clipping and moving things around. And yeah, so this is the start. And now let's get into the actual coding part some research. I wanted to make this a live book. I wanted you to be able to turn the pages on the internet. So I found this. It's called TurnJS and it's a library which has a lot of methods and the ability to create real transitions similar to real pages in a book or a magazine. So this is very exciting. As you can see here they have the basic code. So you create a magazine with the pages and then you tell it to turn by giving it certain um, attributes, like I want it to have gradients, I want acceleration true, and they also show all these different properties on it. So if we go to turn.js, do, 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 oh, wait. <laughs> I wanna go to turn.js.com to see this alive. Um, yeah, and then there's also documentation here about animating, all the different options. So there's a lot to learn. But anyway, I wanted to demo it. That's the real purpose I'm here. So here they have this cute bookshelf, it enlarges. I click on it, boom, it's a book. And I can flip the pages and I can see the contents. And I can also click with my, I'm right now turning it with my keypad. 
So these are all what I'm looking for and then I can exit out and it'll go back to being a small book. So then of course I turn to CodePen. You see other people using this. I found this one. Let's see if I can change the view. Let's go full page. So I liked this one because as you can see it is doing what I wanted it to do. But then also the text on here, um, this creator actually added it themselves. And then the images as well. So this was really cool. Um, this one you can't use your keyboard on. Let's go back to the editor's view. So I actually downloaded this one. I believe it's this guy. And I looked further at it. And while it does a lot of what I want it to do, it uses a lot of background images, which I wasn't, like, I mean, that's one route, um, but it didn't quite reach what I wanted, right? And then I found this guy, which is another flipbook. Still not keyboard accessible, but as you can see, this also uses background images and it's attached to each page. So this was also interesting. It's always good to see other people um, use things. As you can see, there's an actual width and height. Um, gradients false, this false, and I guess they're changing the attribute of title to like, okay, page number one, page number two, uh, which makes sense. Okay, so this is where I got excited. As you can see, this one actually resizes. At first I was very intimidated because look at this JavaScript, like what is going on? Then I realized this is actually the whole script of Turn.js. So this is what's going on behind the scenes. They just, instead of pointing to it, like, um, let's see, I think this guy does. Do, do, do. Um, if I go to the actual code. So what I did is I exported the code for the scrapbook, and then you can see the scripts at the bottom. So this person found the turn.js script, or maybe they're actually hosting it themselves, I'm not even sure. Um, and then also it's connected to jQuery. So again, intimidated by this until I also just realized like, oh, it's the turn.js script. And then as we can see here, if we go to the bottom where it's init, um, it's initiated, turn initiated with book, um, because we can see this person made a function, turn init is the function, it takes in the ID, and if we look here, we have book wrapper, and we have an ID of book. So this is interesting, it's pug. Of course, when I download it, I get this handy dandy file, so this is flipbook 2.1, flipbook 2.1, and you can see the pug and the script the way they are. But yeah, I also get the dist folder, which gives me the index looking pure HTML, the way I like to see it. It would be cool to learn pug, but it's not what this is about. And then the script JS, which is what we were just looking at. And this one has a resize method, which is what is controlling the resizing and why it's so small right there. Um, yeah, and so I have a go live feature. I'm gonna go back to the other one that I am all about. So if I go here, I already put some of my pages here. Um, I don't think I exported the latest page, but I have this go live feature and go live is a visual studio code, which is what I'm using extension. So if I click go live and it opened up in the wrong place. Okay, there we go. So as you can see my cover here, I gotta flip it, boom, I see my first two pages. And this is where it started, right? Before we got to it. Um, yeah, so this is really cool. I'm gonna further learn Turn.js. Um, I did initially start with wanting to learn it for React, which is another framework. Um, and as you can see here, it is also, uh, can be used with React. And the same thing, there are all these options. And then turn takes the options in. So I can do ba doo
Boop, boop. Yeah. Any, yeah. So I got very excited by this. If I go back to here, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna try to create this. Uh, it kind of started with me thinking like, oh, I can make this a zine, you know? And then I was like, what if it was fully digital? So hopefully I keep up with this project and maybe I'll make a tutorial down the line. Who knows? Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Uh, yeah, and I hope you are thinking of ideas for your own side project. Uh, that's all. See you in the next tutorial, video, whatever I decide to do next. Uh, thanks for sticking with me and have a great rest of your day.